So we are fresh off of beating the game. We're in our final thoughts discussion about if we'd recommend the game, how do we feel about it? So I guess the quick summary is... I think it's actually an interesting game. I think for the most part, it's actually held up extremely well, especially compared to some of the other Quintet games that we've played. Uh, the concept of being a young inventor going around and having a mix of combinations of items from scraps to upgrade your robot buddies, uh, the ability to set up custom commands, which it encourages you to kind of change throughout to kind of upgrade your weapons or uh, depending on if you have like a bomb versus a shield pack, it changes your approach in general to dealing with uh, different boss encounters. And I think for the most part, it held up really well. Some of the translation in it is pretty questionable. There's definitely kind of a... You have to kind of love the quirkiness of the games. But overall, I think most of the systems worked as intended. Like, we did use, we did encounter some bugs, but you know, <laughs> that happens. It's SNES games. But I think for the most part, bugs in this game are in favor of the player versus just like jank or being unfair. So I think for the most part, it was fine. I would say just even from a casual experience, it's not a bad playthrough. I think, you know, enemies are rewarding in terms of, you know, if you change weapons to try to get around elemental resist or like physical resist or use run commands or do single attacks to try to get through uh different types of resistances or even abuse of weaknesses i think the game rewards you for kind of experimenting we didn't experiment very much in our playthrough we just chose the almighty fist and almighty lightning sword to destroy everything but i think for the most part I think it was fun from a casual experience, I could say, from outside of our particular playthrough. But even revisiting, it was mostly fun. I think the music is solid. It's a little on the shorter end, so it could be a little repetitive at points. But overall, I would say I would still probably recommend the game. It's not going to be, like, the greatest RPG ever, but if you're just looking for SNES kind of style games, uh, definitely is completely fine there. So I think from our perspective, I don't really have too much to say about this game. I think the concept of being able to uh, manipulate the stats on the robot to energy, which is HP, your power, which is damage, guard, which does what you think it does with defense, or even speed, which is a mix of how quickly you refill your fuel gauge, which is determined, uh, which is consumed based off of the items you use or the run commands, where you stack up to three button presses for ultra attacks. Um, I think it's an interesting system. I think it holds up. I don't think I have any real complaints about it. Combat is pretty quick. We didn't touch a lot of the capsules that appear in battle, but if you want to get extra items on top of guaranteed XP, it gives you that opportunity. So there's reasons to potentially use like a regular sword or axe in order to open the capsules. If you want to get that bonus XP or maybe some bonus items. So yeah, I mean, if you, if you even have a vague interest in kind of a light-hearted, sort of slapstick -y, which kind of makes sense because it was called slapstick in Japanese, uh, kind of parody or satire, however you want to frame it, of uh, JRPGs. I think it was fine. I think there's only a couple points in the game where it's not entirely clear what to do, and sometimes it's just because you have to talk to people multiple times, or you just have to kind of know to really follow up on anything that they say. But I think that's just kind of more of a product of the error than a game fault, specifically. So I think from that standpoint, Chad, I don't really have too much to add in terms of non-spoilers. So I think it was fine. It was probably in the upper end of the Quintet games that we played. I would rather replay this over a lot of the uh, other kinds of games that we played. And don't get me wrong, I really like action games, but I think this was a pretty well done turn-based game, at least from a combat perspective. The ability to use things like Smoke Bomb to escape so that way you're not in random encounters, being able to physically see like 90 plus percent of the enemies so you could avoid combat, or being able to kind of trick them as they walk around in the overworld, I think adds like another layer to it that I always appreciate because I'm definitely not a fan of random encounters. So the fact that it doesn't have that already elevates it to me personally. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's all I have to really add before we go into spoilers. So let's talk about spoilers. 
the plot is not really anything to write home about. You know, when you go through and you're learning about the hackers and then you learn about like all the goofy boss switches, like I'm the leader, no I'm the leader kinds of things. Uh, but I think from that standpoint, Sorry, one second. I think from that standpoint, it also had a lot of memorable areas in it too. Like we're listening to the Volcano Island, for example. I like the whole goofiness turning into the mouse or going into like the cyberspace and things like that. I think most of the level design is mostly memorable, even though that's a lot of hallways. And it's just because like the little bit of character they put into it. I do feel like the, the area, the people are more interesting to talk to than some of the other Quintet games. And I, I think its biggest weakness, honestly, if I had to sum it up, would be uh, side quests. Side quests, for the most part, are very unrewarding. There's like a handful, like maybe 30 or 40 percent, that actually give you something. Others just kind of take your money and rob you. So there's kind of mixed feelings about it. I like kind of like the Easter egg kind of bonuses, like we can go back in the past and have a photo taken of ourselves. But yeah, most of the side quests are like pay 2,000, get nothing. Pay 5,000, get nothing. So, it's just kind of one of those things. Build a house for the mayor, yeah. Spend 8,000, get a photo in the album and also on the wall. So, I can't really think of anything else to add. I mean, I, I think for the most part, you know, there, there are some hard parts of the game and that has to do with more the enemy resistances, like Rose in particular is a pretty big difficulty spike, even in our particular run, where she was just cruel, cruel, cruel. So, unfortunately, you know, there are parts of the game that are a little probably unbalanced, but I don't feel like they were as extreme as some of the games we've seen in Quintet with some of the balance issues. So I would say for now, like, it was fine. It's a little rough that it happens in the past, though. Just because of the standpoint that you potentially have to pay money to get items in order to like if you're under leveled or don't know how to deal with that boss having to pay 5,000 just to get more repairs and cures is kind of mean like think about that think about it that way chat like i came in with a plan but like what if we had to spend a lot of money on the shop in order to beat rose like what if we needed like 12 or 14 repairs because we don't know the strategy to beat her there are a couple points that are a little questionable, where I'm like, they should have still let you use the store without contributing money, for example, and I think some of that would have alleviated the problems of people potentially getting stuck there. Overall, though, as I said before, I like most of the areas we go to. I like, like, the little hacker building snowman. The hackers themselves are kind of goofy. You know, criminals not meant to be taken super seriously. And then I think from the standpoint of villains... Gato is kind of weak. I kind of like Rose. I actually like the concept of Rose where she starts out as the secretary, but because we take her back in time, she ends up like the leader of the thief gang. I, I kind of like that little touch. I like that we saw little points where like the there was hints that there was time travel throughout the game. Choco was probably very unmemorable. It, it was just kind of there, honestly. Most of the stuff we did there was pretty negligible. That's probably the weaker part of the game. I, the final dungeon would have been better if there were less one-way doors, for sure. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else that it was, like, super memorable to me. I I would say that their parody of Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einst, was probably the most memorable villain for me, because we interact with him pretty much the most. So I think from that standpoint, I don't really have too much else to add. I mean, I have mostly positive things. You know, it's it's fine. The game is fine. I'm not going to consider it like my number one RPG or anything, but, you know, we're not necessarily playing the game for plot, it's for like game pacing. And I think with like, there's like a decent amount of humor in it mixed with like, real fast potential plot progression, which is what I love. I love when the games don't have padding. That, that will sell me on RPGs, if I don't have to grind for like a million years, we're good. And if you know what you're doing, like we, we did on the stream, uh, we went through we beat the game at level 25. We did pretty good item management. We even ha uh, still had a lot of gold, 
left over if we really needed it. We ended up with a lot of bonus gold at the end of the game. Not much we could really do with that, though, when they just give you 5k right before the final dungeon. So at least they kind of thought about it to some extent, like, here's a way to beat the game kind of deal. But honestly, yeah, I, I think for the standpoint, I'm happy with the game. I'm happy we got to, we got to play it on stream. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Quintet, I don't think, did any other kind of turn-based games. It would have been interesting. I mean, there's there's always the quirkiness. Like, we were uh, looking up notes by EJ De Caesar. I always forget how to say that. I feel really bad. But the Super NES site, uh, talking about some of the weird mechanics with Charge. Charge was probably the only stat that did not make a lot of sense. Where there were, like, just sharp cutoffs whether or not it actually did anything to refill your energy meter faster. That was probably the only mechanic I'd probably a, a, a complain in, because it doesn't provide like a huge, huge bonus, but you do need it eventually. But you could get way further in the game without putting a single point in it than you would think as well. I do like that it lets us customize the robot's colors, their names, the name of the commands. I like that level of personalization, especially in an SNES game. And then uh, being able to potentially kind of dedicate them to certain roles, which is what we did in the playthrough, is kind of neat. We never ended up getting a third robot buddy, but I like that we got the little robot to follow us occasionally while doing some side quest stuff. So yeah, chat, I don't, I don't think I have anything else to add, so we'll conclude the final thoughts here. So, mostly positive. It was fine. I don't know if I'll replay the game. It's one that, like, I could go back to maybe for nostalgia re reasons, but not, like, game of the year or anything. So anyway, let's leave it at that with our final thoughts. Better than Terranigma, low bar. Yeah, it's a very low bar. So with that, I'm going to say, I guess, goodbye to YouTube. So if you like this, I'm sorry to say, I don't think there's any other Quintet games to play on the older systems. Uh, but hopefully see you again in the next game.